Hello and welcome to another episode of Android Dev 101. Today we're going to be taking a look at a special YouTube API for Android and how to utilize it to display videos and thumbnails from videos in your applications. First, important to note that in order to utilize this API, you're going to need the YouTube Android Player API library included in your project. You see it here located in our libs folder. And when we go to the properties for this project, we see it in our build paths. Now I'm going to post a link to Google's instructions on how to install this library, as well as how to obtain a key for using this special API library. Okay, now as we normally do, let's start off with the layout for application. Again, this is a single activity, single view application demo. Um, and as we look at the UI builder, it doesn't look so pretty. Um, that's because most of the views for this layout are being drawn from our YouTube Android Player API library. So the UI builder doesn't know exactly how to display them, and it's just doing the best it can. Um, I think it's a swell job it's doing there. So let's take a closer look at the XML. Um, a neat little trick, I don't know if we've talked about this in a previous episode, but if you double click on a component in the UI builder, it'll open that component in the XML and highlight it so you can easily edit it or change it. So neat little tidbit if you're editing in the UI builder. Um, so we see our main top component here is a linear layout. Um, it has a weight sum of three. Now the weight sum is going to allow us to divide the top component, as you see here, into three equal portions by giving each one of the linear layouts inside the bigger linear layout a layout weight of one. So one plus one plus one normally equals three. And so that gives them each an equal width since it's a horizontal layout. And that's why their widths are set to zero. Um, I don't know if we talked about weight sums in a previous episode, but it's a great way to divide up a linear layout to different segments. Now it does take some computing time, so just be careful when using it. You don't want to use them too many weight in um, embedded weight sums and weights because that can slow down the loading of your UI. Okay, so in each one of these components, we have a text view, which is going to be the title for the thumbnail that we're going to display, and then the YouTube thumbnail. The YouTube thumbnail view you see is from our, again, YouTube Android Player API. And we have three of them. We're going to display three episodes. We'll see how we're going to do that in the Java code. And last, but definitely not least, we have a bottom view, which has our YouTube player view, which is going to actually display YouTube videos. And then we have another linear layout with two buttons, which we're starting at invisible. And we'll see why in the Java, why the pause and the play button, we start off with zero visibility and that's why we don't see them in the UI builder. Okay, now let's jump over to our Java and see the magic that's going on there. Now, uh, this is again a single activity demo application. You'll see that it extends though, not from a regular activity or a fragment activity or anything like that, but a YouTube base activity. Uh, this is going to let us utilize a lot of the different API calls from the YouTube Android Player API library. So it's important that you extend the YouTube base activity in at least the activity where you're utilizing the thumbnail views or the uh, YouTube player. And we're going to implement an on initialization listener. This one is the YouTube player on initialization listener. And we'll take a look at why we need to implement that in a second. Um, first, we noticed the first three constants we have here, constant strings. Um, these are IDs for YouTube videos. So I know you may be thinking this looks like a bunch of gibberish. How am I going to possibly find that? Well, if we go back into Chrome, uh, we can see from this YouTube video that in the URL we have YouTube.com, watch, question mark, V equals, and then the equals is our YouTube video ID. We can even demonstrate. Let's, let's just uh, show and we'll copy one of these uh, YouTube IDs go into Chrome and if we paste it into where after the, the the parameter for V and we load it and there we go episode one and I'll load it and it's gonna start playing that but let's 
pause for a second because we're recording a video right now. We don't need to play another one. So back to the Java. Um, we have two image buttons, our play button and our pause button, which we saw in the XML. Um, that's going to deal with utilizing our YouTube player video and, and manipulating it. But let's start with our thumbnail. So we have three thumbnails, which we saw in our XML. Um, we're going to link these to episode one, episode two, and episode three of this channel, actually. And they're going to be the thumbnails that are viewed for, for this channel. Now we grab those from the XML as you normally do with find view by ID and the view ID and then on each one after we get the YouTube thumbnail view we're calling a function called initialize as you see here and we give it a new thumbnail listener which is an internal class which uh, we're going to look at in a second and a developer key. Um, now the developer key is something you're going to have to register for and then once you register for it it will allow you to utilize the YouTube API and uh, in this case just for convenience it's stored in a separate class and it's important to keep that developer key secret because if other people utilize it then you know they could um, use your API calls that's registered to your account so I mean you can publicize them but probably better to keep it locked away in a in a drawer or something so let's look at our our thumbnail listener now that is a class uh, again we define internally this is a on initialization listener for YouTube thumbnail view. Now again, our activity it implements on initialization listener for YouTube player. So for the thumbnail, we just did an internal class, um, and with the initializer, we're going to give it the video ID, which we saw earlier identifies the video. And then we have two callbacks that are important. We have an on initialization failure, which we're not going to really do anything in this demo, but you could post a a warning or um, an error to the user and more importantly the on initialization success and you see it gets a YouTube thumbnail and new YouTube thumbnail loader now this loader is going to allow us to th this function when it's called back is basically saying okay the YouTube thumbnail view is ready to go you can now call the function you need on it so we're going to use utilize that to set a video to our video ID which we set earlier and that's going to actually load the thumbnail for that video and then we set an on click listener which will call our video to play in our YouTube view. Okay, sorry, not YouTube view, YouTube player view because everything here is a YouTube thumbnail or YouTube player view. Okay, so our YouTube player view, I said we come back to it. So we have two buttons which are going to be important for YouTube player view, but first let's look at how we initialize it. So we have our YouTube player view. Just a little comment scaping. Okay, so our YouTube player view we have to obviously grab from our XML as well, like we did with the YouTube thumbnail views, and we call initialize on it again. And then our listener is going to be this because we put it on this activity, our listener, so that we'll get callbacks directly to here. The same on initialization failure, we just call a little toast, and then on initialization success then we need to set up some things with our YouTube player view. So first of all, um, we attach the YouTube player. This is a separate object, not the player view, to an object we're storing um, with this activity so we can access it whenever we need. And now the YouTube player is going to control all different things like pausing and, and playing the video that's located in the YouTube player view. And then we're going to set up some listeners. So we set up a playback event listener. Um, we set up a player state change listener and then we set player style to minimal that's going to limit the player to only have pause and play you can also have it with seek um, bars and maximize and lots of different neat stuff but we're just going to use the minimal one for now to keep it simple so what are these callbacks uh, these event listeners and these change back listeners so we implemented two of our own versions let's take a look at the event listener first so now the event listener, which implements the playback event listener, lets us get all these nifty, cool callbacks. So for instance, once the video starts buffering, it'll give us a callback and we can utilize that to um, notify the user or maybe um, stop other actions. Um, for all these actions, we're just going to display a simple toast saying that you know the action will receive. Um, when the video is paused, we can get a callback playing if uh, there's a seek in the video to a certain point in the video. And when the video is stopped, we get a callback. Okay, and we also set another listener. We set our player state change listener. 
So when we go that one, we get a, some other different callbacks. If an ad started, um, you know, you can maybe put a toast here, grab your popcorn, get ready, uh, you know, whatever might be appropriate. Uh, if there's an error loading a video, once the video is loaded, so if you notice, we actually do have a call here besides uh, just a toast. And we're going to wait till the video is loaded until we call our YouTube player. This is our YouTube player class that we grabbed once um, the YouTube player view was initialized. And that's important because um, once the video is loaded, we can actually play the video. So it's going to be like InstaPlay. You know, once it's loaded, we don't wait for the user to press play. We just do it ourselves. And then that pause button that we saw earlier in the XML that was invisible, we're going to set that to visible. Um, and let's take a look at those buttons right now. So those buttons which um, we grabbed in the onCreate, the pause button is going to grab the P YouTube player and actually pause it. And then it's going to set itself to invisible and set the play button to visible. So we only see one button at a time. And the play button, vice versa, it will play the video and set each uh, it will set the pause button to invisible and set the play button to invisible alright so uh, let's take a look at how the application came out um, now the YouTube player um, API for Android library can be a bit problematic sometimes on the emulators so we're going to run it on an actual device and use the Android the J5 Android mirror which we showcased in a previous episode to view it so uh, we've already previously installed and here is the application and let's load it up okay we see it already had a previous let's exit back out it already had a previous thing loaded we see all our toast let's ignore those they're not there stop alright voice command is working even though there wasn't any voice command okay so we launch our application we see the pictures here were loaded from the YouTube um, thumbnail play, uh, thumbnail views for each episode and then this is our player so now forget what we just saw earlier now when we click on any one of these episodes it's gonna load it in our player so like if we click on episode 2 thumbnail see it's loading it and says it calls the onloading callback now it's calling the video start because it instant played you can probably hear a little bit of the feedback from my device and we see all these different callbacks now you see the pause button is here and if we click you see also you can see the progress there's a progress bar for loading and played but if we click on the view the only thing else we have is a pause button we also have a pause button here and we click that it pauses the video as expected we get the callback from paused and it shows our play button so you can add any kind of controls you want to control the uh, YouTube player view by accessing the YouTube player object and we can play it again and then when we click on another thumbnail it's gonna load the other thumbnail and once it's loaded uh, the on stop for the previous video and the video started the other video so that that is how easy it is to add YouTube content to your applications I uh, want to thank you sorry only one person can give a tutorial all the time we're gonna pause you but thank you so much for joining us today and we hope this is informative the code again and all the links are going to be present in the YouTube description for this video and please leave comments on anything that you'd like to see in the future or anything you'd like further explanation in this video